So here we are with another entry in the best team alternate starter series. It's been a very long road traveled and I think we're all happy that we're finally starting to get close to the end of this series. As you can tell, we're starting with Decidueye and Ultra Sun and Moon. Because Ultra Sun and Moon have a lot of options to choose from, I decided to wild out a bit and really chose a very unusual team this time around, while still making it the best team possible. So as always, if you're unfamiliar with this series, I'll go ahead and explain it to you real quick. A best team is a team of six Pokemon that is designed for the absolute best performance for its said Pokemon game. The team usually revolves around a best starter, but since we're using alternate starters, this team will revolve around one of them instead, with this team focusing on the Sidueye. Each team member is designed to do well against the Totem Pokemon, the Kahunas, the Elite Four members, Champion, Rival, and the Evil Team Leaders. When it comes to making their movesets, we'll be including TM moves, however we do not allow post-game tutor moves nor egg moves. So with all that out of the way, let's hop into this best team for Ultra Sun and Moon Decidueye style. Well, I'm pretty sure you guys all know exactly where we're starting off on this team, and that is with the start of Decidueye. You'll naturally get a Rowlet right at the start of the game as your partner, and at level 17, it will evolve into the Hot Topic employee, Dartrix, and then again into Decidueye at level 34. It has the ability Overgrow, which naturally is very casual, and not particularly good, so I guess we can disregard that. You're going to have access to Ghost and Grass Stab moves that should surely be useful to Decidueye, as it can work as both a physical and special attacker to great success. Speaking of being physical or special, let's see the moves we've got picked up for Decidueye today. The moveset Decidueye has for this best team is Spirit Shackle, Leaf Blade, Sucker Punch, and Brave Bird. As you can see, I've gone physical here, starting of Spirit Shackle. It is learned once Decidueye evolves and is a fantastic stab move that keeps the Pokemon stuck in battle for as long as Decidueye stays in the field. The next move is Leaf Blade, which is learned to level 44 and has a high critical hit ratio. So it's yet another good stab move. And don't worry, there are plenty of grass type moves to use before getting this. We've got Sucker Punch up next, a great priority move that is learned to level 38 and gives Decidueye a chance to attack someone else if they're trying to attack it first. Finally, we have Brave Bird, which is learned to level 55. And for a flying type move prior, you have options ranging from Peck to Acrobatics throughout. So with these moves, the Sidjoi will be able to do well against the Totem Araquanid, Lorantis, Mimikyu, Kamo'o, and Rabombi, Guzma's entire team, Lusamine's Lulligant, Milotic, and Beware, Mina's Rabombi, Howl's entire team, Olivia's Lycanroc, Nanus Krakorok, Hapu's entire team except Flygon, Melane's Metagross, Olivia's E4, Lycanroc, and Gigalith, Ace Rolla's entire team, and finally Hows Raichu, Crabominable, and Primarina. But watch out for that crab. The Sidua is going to be useful throughout your entire challenge, without a doubt. Next up on this team, we have ourselves one of the better Pokemon introduced in the 7th generation. The ground type, Mudsdale. You'll be able to find yourself a Mudbray early on Route 4, and by the time it hits level 30, you'll have a powerful Mudsdale fighting alongside you. It's got a couple decent abilities with own tempo, which keeps it from getting confused, and stamina, which raises its defense whenever it's hit with physical moves. It is an absolutely great physical attacker with 125 base attack, and its defense and HP are both base 100, which means you've got physical bulk going on too. Let's see the moves we've got on this one and see what it's capable of doing. Mudsdale is using Earthquake, Rock Slide, Heavy Slam, and Superpower on this journey through Alola. That Earthquake is learned to level 47, so until you get to that point, you can use Bulldoze, which is learned to level 10 as a Mudbray. The next move is Rock Slide, and that will be learned via TM, which can be found over on Route 17, and you can use Rock Tomb while you wait to get that. Heavy Slam is learned to level 34, and does damage based on how much heavier Mudsdale is than its opponent. Finally, we've got Superpower, learned to level 60, and that's not really useful until you're in the Elite Four. But until then, you should use Low Sweep, which is a TM found in Kone Kuna City for purchase. So with these moves, Mudsdale will be able to do well against the Totem Alolan Marowak, Togetamaru, and Rabombi, Guzma's entire team, but watch out for Golisopod, Lusamine's Clefable, Lopunny, and Beware, Mina's entire team, Olivia's entire team, Menu's Krokrok and Alolan Persian, Mulane's entire team, Olivia's entire E4 team, Ace Roll's Driftblim, Kahili's entire team except Halucha, and Howe's entire team except for Primarina. And again, be on the lookout for the Crab. Mudsdale puts in the absolute work in Ultra Sun and Moon, and will be a great partner for this journey. We continue on with this team by featuring none other than the pseudo-legendary of the third generation, Metagross. This was an interesting one, and definitely a Pokemon I was glad to use on this team when I realized it would be a reasonable one. Having the presence of Psychic and Still wrapped into one strong package wasn't something I wanted to pass up, so here we are. You'll be able to capture Beldum on Mount Hakulani prior to taking on Sophocles' trial, and it evolves into Metang starting at level 20 and then into Metagross at level 45. It's got access to the ability Clear Body, which will prevent it from having its stats lowered. And with 135 base attack and 130 base defense, you do not want to see these stats lowered. 
The moves that Metagross is using for this best team is Meteor Mash, Zen Headbutt, Bullet Punch, and Hammer Arm. Meteor Mash is first, and it's learned to level 44, which comes just before Matang evolves into Metagross. Then, you have Zen Headbutt, which ends up being learned to level 32, and is a great move to carry throughout the game. Next, we have Bullet Punch, which is here for priority, and it's learned to level 26. This indefinitely helps Metagross get around speed issues when needed. Finally, there is Hammer Arm, which it learns upon evolution, so pretty much a level 45. You can use the team for Brick Break until then, which is found in Verdant Cavern. With these moves, Metagross will be able to do well against the Totem Komo'o and Rabombi. Lucy means Clefable, Lot Punny, and Beware. Mean is Gramble and Rabombi. None is Croc Rock and Alolan Persian. Mulane's Bisharp, Magnazone, and Alolan Doug Trio. Olivia's entire E4 team. Kahili's Halucha and House Tauros and Crabominable. Metagross hits incredibly hard, and will do pretty well in the Elite Four, so enjoy using a great pseudo on your journey. The next Pokemon we have on this list is a Pokemon that's been featured on prior best teams, the Flying Fire type, Talonflame. It's a ridiculously speedy Pokemon with 128 base speed, and with Flame Body, it'll possibly be able to cause some burns to physical attackers during your playthrough. You'll manage to get your hands on a Fletchling on Route 8, which is relatively early on, and it'll evolve into Fletchinder at level 17, and then into Talonflame at level 35. Like I said, Talonflame is a really speedy Pokemon, and its attack stat is a respectable base 81 with two good offensive typings, so you'll get good mileage out of it during a playthrough. The moves that Talonflame is using for this best team is Flare Blitz, Brave Bird, Acrobatics, and U-Turn. So Flare Blitz is going to be learned thanks to the Mover Learner, which you can get access to just before the Elite Four. So until then, you'll need to use different fire type moves. And in this case, it'd probably be Flame Charge, which is a TM found on Route 8. Then we have Brave Bird, which is another move you'll need to get the Mover Learner to teach Talonflame. Thankfully, we also have Acrobatics, which you can use while you wait to get Brave Bird. And since you'll be running both, it's not too big of a deal that you wait until the Elite Four to have the most powerful flying type attack. Acrobatics can be gotten as a TM on Route 15, and in the meantime, you can use Aerial Ace, which is a TM available for purchasing Kone Kone City. And prior to that, there's always Peck. Finally, we've got U-Turn, and that's another TM you can purchase in Miley City. With these moves, Talonflame will be able to do well against the Totem Arachnid, Lorantis, Togedemaru, Komo'o, and Rabambi. Guzma's entire team, Lucy means Lilligant and Beware, Mina's Mawile and Rabambi, Hala's entire team, Mulane's entire team, Olivia's E4 Cradilly, but of course be careful, Ace Roll's Delmice and Frostlass, Kaylee's Halucha, and House Crabominable. Talonflame leaves its mark, especially on the totems in Elite Four, and honestly seems like it could be the most useful Pokemon on this team, given its great set of moves, and because of how dominant the Flying and Fire type can be in the seventh generation. Next up on the team, we have got another former best team member, Vigavolt. Vigavolt was thankfully changed in Ultra Sun and Moon, so it could evolve sooner, this time on Bush Mountain as opposed to very late into Pony Island. You'll get yourself a Grubbin right at the start of the game, and eventually at level 20, it'll evolve into a Charge Bug. Vigavolt has some insane special attack, clocking in at 145 base, which almost feels unfair on a regular Pokemon you can just get your hands on for the majority of a playthrough. Its ability is Levitate, which helps prevent damage from ground type attacks, though as a bug in Electric type, it wouldn't be weak to that typing anyway. Now let's see what attacks it'll be able to pull out to help you during your island challenge. Thunderbolt, Bug Buzz, Energy Ball, and Air Slash are the moves that Vikavolt brings to this best team. Thunderbolt is learned upon evolving into Vikavolt whenever it is that you're on Blush Mountain. Next up is Bug Buzz, a great bug type move that ends up being learned to level 31. And prior to that level, you can use Bug Bite. The next move is Energy Ball, which is a TM you can get on Route 8, but you'll need Machamp Shove, which you won't get until Pony Pony Island. Finally, there's Air Slash, which you can get via the Mover Learner right before you take on the Elite Four. Now with these moves, Vikavolt will be able to do well against the Totem Raticate and Lorantis, Guzma's Galissapod and Masquerain, Luzma's Lilligant, Milotic and Beware, Nani's Krokrok and Alolan Persian, Hapu's entire team except Flygon, Olivia's E4 Cradilly, Gigalith and Lycanroc, Ace Roll's Delmice, Kahili's entire team, and finally House Crabominable and Primarina. Finally, we have reached the final Pokemon on this team, and I was looking for something that could provide some more coverage that perhaps picks up some of the slack. This final Pokemon is none other than Gudra, the pseudo-legendary from Kalos. Gudra is incredibly good, with either the Hydration or Sap Sipper ability and 110 base special attack alongside 150 base special defense. This thing is going to eat up special hits and smack back with its great move pull that's filled to the brim with coverage. You will find a Gumi on Route 17 outside of Po Town, and it will evolve into Slugu at level 40 and then into Gudra at level 50 if you're battling in the rain. The moves I have on Gudra are Dragon Pulse, Flamethrower, Sludge Bomb, and Blizzard. A very powerful moveset that is going to be super useful for this team. Dragon Pulse is learned to level 47, and Flamethrower can be learned via TM, which is found in Vast Pony Canyon. 
The next move is Sludge Bomb, which is a TM found in the Shady House, worry battle of Team Skull and Poe Town. Finally, we've got Blizzard, which I chose over Ice Beam for the sake of power, albeit the accuracy is a little bit lower, and it can be bought in Seafolk Village as a TM. Now with these moves, Gudra will be able to do well against the Totem Komo'o and Rabambi, Lusamin's Fable, Mina's entire team, Hapu's entire team except for Gastrodon, Mulane's entire team, Olivia's Cradilly, Ace Rolla's entire team except for Bayonet, Kahili's entire team except for Oracorio, and finally House Noivern, Crabominable, and Primarina. But of course, be careful of all three of those. Gudra is a special attacking beast, and despite it being one of the latest Pokemon you get on this team, it'll serve as a fantastic option for all the battles you face, even when you're facing a Pokemon it doesn't have a super effective move for. Alright everyone, that's gonna do it for the best team for Ultra Sun and Moon, the Sidua Edition. This was a really cool one to put together, with a fantastic selection of Pokemon to choose from. I think this team is really good, with half being Alolan Pokemon, and the other half being incredibly strong Pokemon from previous generations. I want to know what you guys think though, so let me know in the comments if you like this team, and if you end up using it for a playthrough. I'll be back soon with the Incineroar Edition, and even beyond that, there are still a couple alternate starter best teams I have to go out and do. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel for notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you guys enjoyed this content, maybe you'll enjoy my anime content and gaming content as well. I do a lot of anime top 10s and discussions, and with the gaming channel, Channel, I play Pokemon and everything Nintendo. Also follow me on social media so you get updates about when I go live on Twitch or when I upload in general. Links for all that will be in the description below. If you want to support me even further and gain cool perks, check out my Patreon. These lovely people have all given me their support over there and I couldn't be more grateful to them. I think I'm wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.